returning to Fitzroy Crossing stirs mixed emotions in Percy Brown. It's his country and the place of his people, but it's also where he was charged with a murder he insists he didn't commit. I'm innocent from that day. Couldn't have finished interviewing me and forcing me to do that. To right now where I'm sitting. On the banks of the Fitzroy River in 1979, a man was found dead here. Just hours earlier, Percy had been caught sleeping with the victim's wife. I was running away from where you were me, I killed me. So you thought he was going to kill you? Yeah. I ran, ran down there, got across the creek there, going up. And I just had to keep one young girl. Police focused their attention on the then 20-year-old Walmajuri man, and Percy says he was pressured to sign a confession. I was interviewed all day. I would keep on saying no, 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 until they got that data from Gunner and after they were threatening me. Percy spent five long years in prison, but many still doubt that he should have. He was very soft, soft-voiced, soft, uh, and softly spoken, reticent, whispered, hard to get a word out of him, and shy, and, and I, I just, I didn't think he had it in him. Retired District Court Judge and former WA Prisoners Review Board Chairperson Alan Fenbury was his defence lawyer, and he says language was often a barrier for accused Indigenous men like Percy. It was very difficult to, to know whether the accused really appreciated they had a right to silence. And uh, I've often thought, that this bloke doesn't have a clue what a confession is or a caution. Um, and that was a frustration, professional frustration, continually in these cases. The prosecution's case was also based on some footprints at the crime scene. Mr Fenbury believes that was insufficient, a point he made at court at the time, questioning, is there any other scientific evidence that you know of that connects this man with the killing? To which the detective answered, no. The local community had also raised concerns about the conviction at the time. As a young journalist, Steve Hawke witnessed the resistance firsthand. They'd undertaken their own investigations in terms of Aboriginal law and they, they told me that another man had done it and that man, man was now being punished under the Aboriginal law. Percy now works for the courts as a Creole translator, helping other First Nations people navigate the system. They're my family, we are black and Australian people. To help them, you know? That's my job. He now wants his case revisited and ultimately overturned. And a lot of the community backs him. If people are being wrong done by and being accused of things and sent to jail, of course you've got to try and find a way of healing. Percy says it's an issue that's bigger than himself. Yeah, because not, not only me, there's a lot of thing, uh, same thing with a lot of Aboriginal people. WA police wouldn't comment on this particular case but the force has previously apologised for its treatment of Indigenous people in the past. It says things are now improving. There's always work to be done, um, but look, I've seen over the last five years we've definitely uh, made headway. For now, Percy holds out hope that the many questions that have haunted his life for more than 40 years can finally be put to rest. Jessica Hayes, ABC News, Fitzroy Crossing.